Hey, welcome back once again, Sec Plus Preppers. These are the IT Dojo Security Plus questions of the day. I'm Colin Weaver. Every single day I ask you two questions to help you with your studies. Let's go ahead and get right to it. Here comes question number one. You've been hired uh, to perform a penetration test by a chain of pet supply stores. Now, the scope and bounds of your penetration test have been agreed upon but you have not been provided with any additional details on the structure of the network. My question to you is, what type of test are you going to be performing? Here's your answer choices. Go ahead and click pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play and we'll break it all down. All right, first answer on the list. You are doing a vulnerability assessment. No, it says very clearly in the question that you're doing a penetration test. A vulnerability assessment and a penetration test are two different things. So no, that is not the right answer. Second choice on the list says that you are white box testing. Negative, if you are white box testing, you would have been given a lot more detail about the structure of the network. So we are looking for just the opposite of that. Next two choices are also not correct. Uh, you are not fuzzing. Fuzzing may be something that you do as part of your penetration test, but fuzzing is not uh, specifically the type of test that you are doing. And then the next option, which is not correct, is gray box testing. And gray box testing is a mixture between black box and white box testing. Sort of sits right in between. Um, and uh, you are not doing that here either. Next choice on the list is a denial of service. Uh, no, that's not a test. So that is not any kind of penetration test or vulnerability assessment or anything like that. It's an attack uh, to go in and do that. And then the next answer is the one that you're actually looking for, which is you're doing a black box penetration test. A black box penetration test is when you are given basically no information other than what your target is and the scope and boundary of just how far you're allowed to go in your penetration test is defined uh, well up front so you don't have any problems on the back end but you're not given anything about the structure of the network or any other kind of additional details. So that's very much what's going on here. And then the very last option on the list is a crystal box test. That's another name that you might hear somebody throw around if they're talking about white box testing. Um, my best guess is that they're just trying to sound cool if they do that because white box testing is much more readily understood by everybody. So, but it's another term that's out there. So in this case, black box test is what you're looking for. All right, here comes question number two. My question to you is, what's a TPM? There's your answer choices. Click pause, read them through. When you're ready, click play again. We'll talk it out. All right, first batter on the list says that a TPM is a cipher suite often used in TLS connections. No, that's just not true. Uh, TPM is a trusted platform module, is not used in transport layer security. So negative. The next item on the list says that a TPM is the reference value used for managing keys in an IPsec connection. Well, that sounds fancy. That's actually what an SPI, a security parameter index does, not a TPM. So again, TPMs don't have anything directly to do with IPsec connections. All right, the third choice on the list is the one that you're looking for. A TPM is a uh, component embedded typically on the motherboard of a computer system, and it contains encryption keys. Uh, those are used for a variety of different things, uh, such as uh, verifying hardware, verifying um, uh, whether or not programs have been changed. Uh, there's all kinds of neat stuff that a TPM can go in and do, and trusted platform modules, what the acronym stands for, and that's very much what, uh, what you're looking for in this question. And then the last two items that are put there just to distract you, one says that it's used in the, the connection layer of SSH connections, and then the other one says that it's a USB fob used in multi-factor authentication. Neither of those are true. Those are just there to distract you if you didn't know what a TPM was already. So um, no, in terms of those last two answer choices. All right, just like that, two more questions down. Hope you enjoyed them. If you did, click like. If you want to get them every day, click subscribe, because I do these questions every single day. So there's lots of them you can go back and watch, and there'll be lots more in the future. Two a day. So I'll see you tomorrow.